So uh, I will add yeah, some information about active inference uh, and a, 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 a OS uh, in continue to Jakob talk. Uh, but uh, also will provide uh, more information from Institute scale about our work and um, possible collaboration so, with our participants. Uh, so uh, we are Institute which is working on the frontier of active inference as we consider it. And uh, it's a scale free cognitive uh, framework which is based, based on first principles that models uh, decision-making process and actions of agents in the, in the environment. And uh, it's quite important about scale-free here because it uh, means that we can apply it for different types of uh, agents uh, and systems. And uh, for me personally, a very important that, which, uh, that it's based on first principles starting from, uh, from physics from thermodynamics uh, through information theory to quantum information theory. It's uh, quite a uh, broad space for people who are like math and uh, physics. Uh, this framework uh, combines perception, action, and infer inference to optimize information processing and handle uncertainty uh, in relation to different kinds of agents it can be a light uh, which was mentioned for robotics, uh, for artificial intelligence, uh, but also a lot of our fields and domains like neuroscience. Uh, and we, for now, we see real world, world examples of application of the framework. Uh, <clears throat> active inference agent acting to minimize his uh, surprises in informational sense and uh, maximize, maximize expected outcomes on different time scales, having his uh, generative model in place and updating it or updating environment. Uh, this process uh, all, all, always based on gathering information and uh, based on it uh, generating actions uh, uh, based on that uh, generative prob probabilistic models. As I mentioned, it uh, could be applied for various fields and uh, uh, we are as an institute uh, starting it from ourselves uh, in the beginning from team communications and later we see paths uh, to decision making, management, uh, governance and a lot of other things related to organizations as entities and as, as a agents. As for active entity ontology for science, first of all, we could consider in terms of active inference, uh, we can consider it as a part of a shared gener generative model of uh, people as personalities or organizations or projects which should have some common language in place. And having it, uh, uh, there are uh, some uh, <laughs> evolution happening and providing ways to struct, to uh, represent different scientific knowledges in a common way to enable efficient collaborations and knowledge sharing. Uh, it can facilitate interoperability across uh, different scientific domains, uh, standardized uh, concept and relationships. And finally, it could be a way to accelerate scientific discoveries and inter interdisciplinary collaborations. You can find some additional information and actually paper by various links and the ontology as itself uh, you can find on Coda page maybe have a look and consider if it connects with you in some way and uh, important here that uh, how it could be developed both uh, active inference as a framework uh, as a cornerstone and uh, in developments with active inference ontology active entity ontology can improve uh, decision making 
and collaboration of teams of organizations. Uh, <clears throat> there are possible ways uh, and different ways to integrate uh, it with the blockchain standards, uh, which enhance the digi digitalizations of such uh, scientific artifacts, which later uh, in evolutionary manner could be reproduced uh, and evolved uh, throughout different communities. Finally, we consider uh, Institute as a part of research ecosystem and our intentions here to provide uh, we, as an agent uh, to provide more interfaces and more structured ways uh, to communicate in these uh, frontier domains uh, because it's uh, quite hard science and we need to find ways to use common language in different projects and by that uh, evolve, evolve research ecosystems. So I think that's all from, from, from my side.